Hello and welcome back finally to another episode of Gary's Garage where I'm going to be looking at the state of the Anglia after my teeny tiny little big crash uh, at Blyton Park in the last episode. So it's been a few weeks and I apologise for the lack of videos but I hope you can understand that having that accident just really kind of knocked all of the mojo out of me. Um, I was at the point with this car where I was kind of I considered it done and I was just about ready to enjoy it over the summer and continue on with the other projects I've got and yeah obviously damaging this has uh, yeah severely knocked me quite a lot so for those of you who are still subscribed and still watching and still supporting me on Patreon thank you very much for sticking with me throughout this mini break um, but hopefully today I will find out just kind of how much damage there is to the front end and I'm going to try to do that by getting the Hunter powered up, get that on. I've got the values from when I set it up just a few months ago and I can see there what's happened to the front end in relation to the back and how it differed from the last uh, alignment that I did. So that's going to be the first thing I'm going to do is get the Hunter powered on, get it all hooked up so I'll be back with you once we have some data on the screen. So these are the settings now, so definitely the camber and caster on the front left are very different, uh, as is toe as well, so that's 10 minutes of toe out, the right has 18 minutes of toe in, rears mm, a bit off but then possibly slightly due to the fact that I've not got any extra weight in the car. Um, so we can do uh, other measurements as well. Uh, you know, make additional measurements. So let's uh, symmetry measurements and set back. So I oh, need to steer the steering wheel straight again. One second. Okay, so steering centered. All the centers are locked. Let's have a look. So we have seven millimeters setback on the front. That was, I think, zero before. The offset, 21 and 26 mil. That was, I think, 26 mil each side. So yeah, that's definitely changed. And axle offset there, a couple of millimeters. I don't know whether that was, I can't remember now. I'll have to check that. Um, and let's do the wheel base and track width. Okay, so we've got track width and wheelbase, and yep, yeah, that's definitely changed. I got those wheelbases almost exactly bang on before, but I will pull up the old values and we'll do a comparison. So taking a look at the results of the Hunter, I think I have an idea of what's gone on, and that is definitely that the chassis has moved across towards the driver's side from the shunt. And the main thing that's making me think that is the fact that the caster on the driver's side has changed substantially. It was previously leaning forward quite a bit by about three to four degrees, and it's now basically almost upright. And I will explain quickly on the whiteboard why I think that has happened. Okay, so what I think has happened is, as normal, this is my chassis. And I then have two track control arms which come out and they stop the wheels from going in and out you know left and right. I then have coming forward from that two more arms and they pick up at the front and we have a fixed point there and there and a fixed point there and there. We then have the strut top, which sits 
back a little bit and that comes down to there and the angle between there and there on the vertical is about three degrees and that is my caster. So what I think has happened, and I'm going to draw this quite exaggerated, is I think we now have the chassis rails are sitting like that. Our arms here have moved across. Which has pushed this backwards, because remember that's a triangle, so that distance there to there and there to there hasn't changed. And then our now, our struts, are like this, and there we have zero degrees. That is sitting directly on top now, I think. So it's quite exaggerated, but I think that's kind of what happened. So this here has moved from here, and it's moved round like that. It's pivot point, so which has brought this point, which is my, uh, the bottom of my strut has come round. That is what's lowered the caster to zero degrees. And I think that definitely means that my chassis has been pushed across and is no longer parallel. So hopefully that whiteboard explanation made some sense. Engineering explained, I certainly am not. But that's the general purpose, the general idea. Chassis moved everything gone screwy. Um, so I have, whilst I've been kind of looking over this data, I have bought myself another radiator and another charge cooler radiator ready to remake them because of course they aren't just bolt on, they need modifications. And I'm also in talks with somebody about uh, seeing whether I can get the car onto some kind of jig to straighten up the chassis. Um, so I'll come back to you with some more details of that later. Um, but that's kind of where we are really. So I have finally got round to having a look at the car. And yeah, it's about as bad as I thought it was. Or yeah, you know, I thought that that chassis had moved originally and sticking a hunter on it has kind of confirmed it for me. When I actually get kind of like it up on a ramp or get it on some kind of jig and actually do some measurements, I will probably find just how far, you know, possibly, I don't know, an inch or so, maybe it's moved across. Um, although saying that, you know, the engine is now touching over on the turbo on that side. There wasn't much clearance there before. And so maybe that stopped it from going any further. I don't know yet. Um, so that's where we are. Um, so, I suppose all I can say is I'm very sorry for the big delay between the videos um, and how short this video may be. Um, but as I said, I just kind of lost all my mojo, all my motivation about really looking at the car. And all I wanted to do was just kind of crawl into a corner and cry, really. Um, and yeah, cry I have done a few times over it. Um, I know at the end of the day it's only a car, but... I've put a lot of me into it um, and you know I didn't really expect it to be quite that terrible so yeah there we go but it will be rebuilt it will come back together um, weighing up options what I'm going to do about the fiberglass front whether I'm going to try to repair it or whether I'm just going to buy another one uh, so yeah that's where I am that's where we are thank you very much for sticking with me um, I will be back at some point with a bit more of an update um, and I know that I've got another vehicle that I've been not doing also, which is the Legnum. Um, but yeah, this just kind of took everything out of me um, that day at Blyton. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get back into the swing of things, I promise, because I want to get it done. I want to get this car out. I want to get my Legnum back on the road. So yeah, I will start cracking on with them at some point soon. Uh, anyway, uh, that's enough rambling from me, so thank you very much, and I'll see you next time on Gary's Garage. Bye! Bye.